What's good people and today I'll be going over with you some shooting tips big and small that you must know and apply to your game to help improve your shooting in NBA 2K24. So alright, let's get it. In 5 versus 5 modes and depending on the player you make in the city, majority of your jump shots are going to come in catch and shoot situations off of driving kicks and just defensive sloppiness where you're going to be hopefully wide open all the way through. So to start, I want to help you get these type of shots off as often as possible and as cleanly as possible. And the biggest obstacle between a good and bad catch and shoot player is knowing when you're open or still open when you catch it and not getting caught taking heavily contested shots when the situation disappears or was never there in the first place. And you can limit this by simply being aware of the nearest threat to your player before you catch the ball and then shoot. A common setup is passing to somebody relatively open and they catch the ball, not getting picked. It's like confirmation that the player you pass to is still open and now it's time to launch. Well, it's not that easy. Things can change quickly, like the pass not being directly where you want it or your target taking forever to catch the ball. And defenders sprinting from the paint or in the wreck, human defenders coming from the side, getting the hand up and forcing you into an unexpected heavy contest. Annoying, right? So while the ball is in the air, quickly scan for the nearest guy to your target. He could be running from the pain, who knows? But focus on them all the way until it's time for you to decide to shoot. You'll be surprised how doing this helps you make smarter decisions on when to shoot or not and avoid the over-eagerness to shoot regardless that consumes you in the city or wreck if you hadn't gotten the ball in two quarters. Do not take the half second the ball is in the air for granted. This is your chance to preload your brain with info on what to do next. Instead of being locked into a decision, and being led by your emotions against the ever-changing defense. Off the dribble against user defenders to get yourself open shots consistently, you always are gonna wanna play with the idea of getting into the mind of the defender, giving them something to react to, whether it's simply dribbling to the left or right, having a pick and roll come over, or just simply driving, and then staying one step ahead of what they're probably gonna do against that action you just presented to them. Everything is based on this. If I set up a pick and roll on the guys coming from the right, I now know the opponent is ready to react to it, but I want them to. A lot about this game, you wanna use common tendencies that you see in 2K to your advantage. We're simply driving towards the hoop. This is a popular one, combined with a snatchback. If you do it fast enough, the defender's still sprinting, reacting to your drive when you're already shooting a wide open shot. Instead of reacting to the defense, always have a counter in your head based on what you're currently doing and how they're gonna react and be ready to execute it. Now let's go into your controller settings for a bit. And first going down to your shot timing visual cue. This setting allows you to set when you want the perfect time to release the ball to be on a player's jumper for you to green. You can set it to when they jump, which is equivalent to having your release on very fast. You can also set it to when the ball is rested on the hand about to be launched forward. You can have it to push when they're about to push the ball forward and release when they're about to release the ball, which is equivalent to having your timing on very late. So this will take the longest to complete. Now each player has a different jump shot. So if you play five versus five, one player jumper can make your push look like it's on very fast or jump. Because the time it takes for that jumper to complete is very short compared to other players. This setting just adjusts your timing within the jumper. Take somebody like Drew Holiday. He shoots very fast regardless, so it's always gonna look super fast when shooting with him. Now if you wanna strictly focus on your shot timing visual cue, you can turn your shot meter off by going into your options and then controller settings and down to shot meter. So if you're used to staring at the meter, this definitely will be tough at first, but will help you in the long run if you want to get used to your jumper and the visual cue that you have set in your settings. Do be aware though that the more tired your player gets or if you're taking heavily contested shots can throw your visual cue timing all off. Another way to help you shoot in percentages is being comfortable enough shooting in the mid-range area. There's multiple ways to dominate in the mid-range this year so you don't want to ignore it completely. I know it's fun to try and contact dunk over four players but you're leaving points on the floor here. Step backs are an easy way to score in the mid range as your shot doesn't really get sped up all that often due to the amount of space you create with it. Combining this with a pick and roll is almost unfair by putting a hedge defender on an island the size of New York. 
floaters or even regular jumpers are money as your make window isn't ridiculously small. Guards are conditioned to once you break inside the three point line to guard the rim. So like I mentioned before, stay one step ahead and if the shot at the rim doesn't look like it's gonna be there, don't be shy to hit a midi. Another feature that I love in 2K this year is if the defender has their hand down, they're not gonna be able to sufficiently affect your shot. So if you have space and notice your user defender has his hand down in the defensive pose, don't be afraid to raise up and make them think twice about not being prepared. You can catch guys slipping and catch and shoot situations like this as well if they like to switch to whoever you pass to quickly. Aside from off the catch situations, being in a triple threat is another way to take advantage of a defender not having his hand up in your face. An unorthodox way to help with your shooting in NBA 2K24 is using the defensive shade mechanic to your advantage and just stare at it to tell you if you're open or not by the game's logic. If you're unfamiliar with it, its purpose is to tell you which way the defender is playing the offensive player, to the left side, straight up, or to the right. But if they're far back enough from the ball handler, they won't even register on the system, and all three spots will be green. Which you can use to tell yourself then that it's time to pull up if you're struggling with knowing if you're wide open or not. As long as you pull up while it's showing all green, the most the defense can get is a light contest on you. Now, if you find yourself unable to get a clean look for your ball handler or driving kick chances are non-existent, it may be time to dip into your playbook and try some off-ball action to free up your shooters. A simple one is hitting LB or L1 on your controller when you come up the court to bring up your player's icons and then select who you want to call the play for and then hit the button for receive screen and the player you selected will run an off-ball screen to break free, hopefully, from the defense. Another thing you must know is to also not get caught up in the speed of the game and fear of getting contested and shoot off balance shots when you don't need to, although there is a time and a place for it. But if you're wide open during a fast break, mainly simply just quickly let go of the left stick to stop your player before you shoot the ball to set your feet. Again, there are times when shooting off balance is beneficial, but you don't want to opt for it when you have a chance to set your feet and get the biggest green window you can possibly get. By going into your options and into settings, you can adjust your shot feedback so the game can tell you if you're being early or late on jumpers and layups, and how covered you were. Off obviously tells you nothing, user only will give you info about the shots you put up. Free throw only gives you info only on your free throws and all shots if you're interested in this setting, this is what you want to put it on, tells you info about what you and your opponent are putting up. So you can see how often their earlies are hitting or if he's consistently greening 40% cover shots on you. And man, there's so many instances throughout a game where we don't take advantage of the user defender turning their back to us or giving us too much space and firing immediately. You notice it more when you play on a closer camera and see the instant they turn around. So finding a camera that's actually closer to the player can do wonders. So all right, sports gamers, do you agree with the list? And if not, what's something that helped improve your shooting overnight? Let me know in the comments down below. And stay tuned here at Sports Gamers Online for more NBA 2K content. And once you're with us, hit that bell icon at the bottom so you don't miss anything we put out. All right, people, I'm Chris. Thank you all for watching. And be good, yo.